Today's episode is brought to you by Star Wars Battlefront 2. What's the one thing you know about fighting zombies? It's go for the brain, right? But that's a more complicated proposition than you think. Which part of the zombie brain do you go for? If armed with only a knife, where is the best place to attack a zombie? Back you demons! Back go! Oh. oh, has anyone ever tried that? It seems like the most basic walker elimination device in apocalypse stories such as The Walking Dead are bladed weapons like knives. But when the weapons are used, they are used indiscriminately, as getting through a zombie skull is apparently like stabbing a hot knife into butter. But is that true? And doesn't it matter where you pierce a zombie skull? Let's use basic anatomy and neuroscience to figure out the best practices for zombie removal. First, why go for a brain at all? Well, a zombie's brain is the locus of its movement and its ability to plan and controls how its bitey parts move. Also, we know that zombies are immune to limb and organ damage, so going for the brain is the sensible choice. But if you want to get at the most complicated structure in the universe that we know of, you first have to go through the zombie's skull. Ew. Bits of sick. Unlike what shows like The Walking Dead seem to imply, sorry Rick, it is not that easy to pierce a skull with a knife because also unlike what zombie shows like The Walking Dead imply, the skull does not decompose. As the bacteria that escapes our guts when we die starts to eat us alive and turn us into gas and gunk and scavengers pick out our bones, flesh will go, sure, but the bones themselves will only start to decompose under environmental exposure, like rays from the sun and bleaching in the hot, hot Atlanta heat. And zombies usually still have some flesh on them. So if you wanna get to those sweet, sweet zombie brains, you're gonna have to make it through a full strength skull and not a decomposed skull. Let's say that you are suddenly accosted by a zom zom. Where is the best place to strike its skull? And you only have a knife and your life depends on it and your knowledge of anatomy. Come on, what is it? Come on, what is it? If you want to get to a zombie brain, you should go through its skull at its thinnest point. Ha, <sighs> thank God. <laughs> Looking to the structure of the skull, there is a big difference between the thickest and the thinnest bones. For example, some of the thinnest bones are in the temporal bone region right near your eye and your ear, only four millimeters thick. Some of the thickest bones on the other skull <laughs> are right here, right at your forehead in the frontal bone region, coming in at eight millimeters in thickness. You know, right where everyone in The Walking Dead always stabs everything like tot- Oh, I'm sorry, Daryl. I don't like your knife work or your bangs. Cut them, you have knives. Studies of skull puncturing have found that it takes about twice the amount of force to pierce a skull bone that's about twice as thick, specifically 255, Newtons for the temporal bone region and 540 Newtons for the frontal bone region. And though a good knife can easily generate this kind of force, we also know, oh no, oh no, we also know from forensic cases that the thickness of a skull in a stab wound really affects the severity of that stab wound. And so, the optimal strike on a zombie would be surprise bone. The temporal bones or the orbital bones behind the eye or right, right in the ear. And the least optimal strike would be another bowie knife in the forehead where it may get stuck or in the occipital bone in the back of the head. But given all of these <sighs> basic anatomy lessons that we'd have to remember in the heat of the moment, we should ask ourselves, is going for the zombie's brain even necessary? The human brain is amazingly complex, complex enough that a random strike just anywhere is not going to be a reliable kill shot. So we may have to rethink some classic zombie fighting advice like you get from someone like Daryl is part of the complex web of integrity that the human mind wants to be. 
For how fragile it can be, the human brain is incredibly resilient to damage. You can remove half of it and still function. You can have a pipe shot through it and still be okay, like in the famous case of Phineas Gage. And you can have a pencil shoved way up in there and be fine. No, seriously, here's the x-ray of the guy. He, he was fine. Look at that. <laughs> My point being, a single stab to the brain like you often see being used on The Walking Dead as a takedown is not a guaranteed one-shot kill. But there is a place where it is, oh, here we go. It is not the brain, but the brain stem. Through this little piece of tissue here runs your motor control and what regulates your breathing and your heart rate. It's all right there. Ah! Damn zombs zombs! If you attack the brain stem then, it will result in complete and immediate paralysis and immobilization and there's no skull to protect it. So size up a zombie that you want to take down, follow the back curvature of the skull to where it meets the neck and then aim with your weapon about two to five centimeters below this point and take them down. The same reason why this is so effective is the same reason why police and military snipers are taught to target this specific area in hostage situations. So the bad guy has no ability to reflexively pull a trigger. Oh, that's why. So where is the best place to attack a zombie? That has conditions. If you are cornered and you have no other option and you have to go through its skull, pick the thinnest parts of the skull, like the ones right on the side of the head. But in all other instances, the most effective and immediate way to take down a zombie is to attack its brainstem, which will render them almost completely harmless instantly. After all, this is what the coolest zombie weapon ever is doing already, isn't it? Oh, because science. Oh. Do you know what the best zombie weapon is that no one ever mentions? Knowing what a zombie is. Nobody, why? Nobody in zombie films and, and, and TV shows knows what a zombie is. What universe is this where nobody on earth knows what a zombie is or has never encountered the concept before? Every zombie universe that does not acknowledge what a zombie is, uh, is ignoring thousands of years of human history where the idea of the undead has been a thing and going for its head and its brain has been a thing. So the best weapon in a zombie apocalypse is to not be a real dum-dum and ignore human history and you get what an undead zombie is supposed to be through human culture and, and you fight them that way because everyone would know. Rick. Thanks again to Star Wars Battlefront 2 for sponsoring today's episode. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is out now. We finally get to join the Empire with expert pilot and soldier Iden Versio Inferno Squad Commander in that new single player campaign that everyone is talking about. And in multiplayer, you can play as characters from every Star Wars era, like Rey, Kylo Ren, Darth Maul, Yoda, and many more. Star Wars Battlefront 2 also features gorgeous worlds from the prequel trilogy, like Naboo, and you can pilot ships like Darth Maul's Scimitar and Han Solo's Millennium Falcon. How cool does that sound. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is available right now for PS4, Xbox One, and PC wherever games are sold. Thank you so much for watching, Aaron. If you want more stuff from me, check out Muskwatch, Space Program, Social Media Handles. Thank you to Dr. Bradley Wojtek, who wrote the very cool book, Do Zombies Dream of Undead Sheep, and helped me a lot on this episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.